All right, alternate day fasting. Nothing a little calendar can't handle. Let's see. If I start eating, I ate today. So let's fast tomorrow, then we'll eat, then we'll fast, then we'll eat, and then we will be fasting on my birthday. Guys, what is up? Welcome to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we dive into various health topics in weird and interesting ways. So this week, you saw in the intro, we are talking alternate day fasting. And we're gonna make some assumptions here that you have a little bit of a background of fasting or you probably wouldn't have searched this topic in YouTube or you also would have watched some of the previous videos where we dive into the basics of fasting, the intermittent fasting field guide, and some interesting research. A couple of weeks ago, we looked into early time-restricted feeding. I will link all those previous videos down below, or you can check them out, or most of them, the important ones, up in the cards above, so we can get right onto this topic. Alternate day fasting. There's no fancy words here, or there's no reading in between the line. It's literally what it says it is. Eating every other day. You eat a day, you fast a day. You eat a day, you fast a day. You watch the magic happen. Expelliar hormesis. Well, well, we'll get to the magic later. So what really spurred this video was some recent research that just came out. A very interesting randomized control clinical trial on alternate day fasting. But first let's talk about why you may want to care about intermittent fasting and what it's trying to do. So intermittent fasting, prolonged fasting, is a way to mimic calorie restriction. Now calorie restriction is exactly what it sounds like it means. Taking your baseline of calories that you eat, say 2,000 calories a day, and eating 1,700 calories a day. Forever. Calorie restriction has shown many benefits from a longevity and health span perspective in animal models. But who the hell likes to eat less forever? That's no fun. So what did we start doing? We started working in different intermittent fasting protocols that can help mimic the biological and physiological effects of calorie restriction without actually restricting calories and keeping track of everything in you know a little secret calorie restriction notebook you you have them too right okay just making sure so along with increasing longevity and health span intermittent fasting has shown to move many biomarkers in the right direction in terms of healthy aging and longevity this includes blood glucose insulin sensitivity lowering cholesterol decreasing oxidative stress, improving cardiovascular health, promoting our cellular recycling program, autophagy, yada, 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 yada. A ton of good things. That's why so many people are hopping on this fasting train. No, okay, I won't do my conductor hat. So let's look into this particular study that was just released at the end of August, 2019, around alternate day fasting. Now this randomized control trial had a total of 60 participants. They were broken up into a control group and an intervention group. The controlled group just lived their lives normally. The intervention group went through the alternate day fasting protocol. Now the definition of alternate day fasting as it applies to this study is 36 hour periods without food. These are your fast periods. No calorie liquids, foods, anything and then you have 12 hours of feast period, which the participant could eat anything that they wanted for those 12 hours. There were groups that did this for six months and there were groups that did this for four weeks. The majority did it for four weeks. There were a few participants that did it for an extended period of time as well. So there's some data to correlate there. And in terms of the results, things were very, very interesting. So we're gonna look into the results of this study from a physiological and a molecular level to see how alternate day fasting over this four week period or this six month period affected the participants compared to the controls. Got it? Let's go. 
First off, the physiological results. So right off the bat, the alternate day fasting group saw a 37% decrease in calorie consumption from a weekly perspective, leading to a loss of body fat and specifically visceral fat. So the researchers used a DEXA scanner, which basically x-rays the body and is able to tell the percentage of muscle, fat, bone density, and so on. So they did find, like I said before, a decrease in visceral fat. That is the fat that is associated with the worst metabolic conditions, the decrease in health, the lower longevity, all metabolic risk. So that in itself is a very good sign. Along with the loss of fat, the loss of visceral fat, there was no noticeable change in bone density. So this means the weight that they were actually losing was from fat. It wasn't from bone deterioration, it wasn't from muscle, it was from fat. Specifically, that bad fat. So, that's good news. Next, as we get a little smaller here and we look at lipids and fatty acids in the blood serum as well as some cardiovascular metrics, we find the following. LDL and VLDL cholesterol, the ones that are typically associated with poor cardio metabolic health, or cardiovascular health decreased. There were improvements in participants' blood pressure, their heart rate, and their arterial and pulse pressure. So some pretty cool findings from the cardiovascular and the lipid front. But where does your body get all that energy from when, you know, it's not eating? Ketones. When researchers looked at the blood serum, they found an increase in beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is probably like the most popular ketone if, you know, ketones care about popularity. Those ketones are a direct result of fat oxidation. Your body is breaking down fat to make them to make energy that could be brought into your mitochondria and be used. Now, previous studies have shown that ketones bring with them some protective cardiovascular properties as well as anti-aging properties. So participants who underwent that intervention of alternate day fasting saw an increase in them. In terms of hormones, one of the things that pointed out in this study was the decrease in one of our thyroid hormones, T3. And that is short for a word that I can't even think about pronouncing, so I'm not gonna try it. I'll put it right here. Get right, big word. And previous studies there have shown that lower levels of T3 were associated with longevity and aging. So interesting there. Finally, some other interesting findings from this study in no particular order. On fasting days, participants saw a decrease in the pro-aging amino acid methionine, while polyunsaturated fatty acids were elevated, as well as a reduction of an age-associated inflammatory marker, SICAN1. So that was a lot in this short amount of time. And that was a lot that changed from a physiological and a molecular standpoint, just by adding a protocol that has you eating every other day. Now, with all the experimentation that I've done with intermittent fasting and fasting in general, I've done prolonged fast. I follow an 18-6 early time restricted feeding protocol every day. I'm messing around with adding a five and two into it, which is five days of eating per week, two days of fasting. So you get that little 36 hour fast twice a weekend. I have not yet tried or even thought about trying alternate day fasting to this point. In my opinion, this seems like one of the harder protocols to follow. Obviously, it has a lot of benefits. And before you do anything, everyone's situation is different. The research I just went over, the participants were healthy, middle-aged, non-diseased adults. Not saying you're not healthy. And you're definitely younger than middle-aged because when you look at you, you're, you're, you're awesome, you're glowing. Um, but everyone's in a different situation. This is informational purposes. This is just to get you thinking, and me thinking, because this was new to me, of all the possibilities, all the benefits of channeling the way we used to eat, how we've evolved to eat, not eating every second and, and thinking about food every second of our lives. So, some very, very interesting information here. I'm gonna probably have to give this a go at some point in the near future, see what it feels like, and hopefully I'll be able to provide a little more information at that point. I hope this was interesting, first of all. Hope it was informative, hope you learned a little bit. I certainly did reading through this research. Like I said before, if you wanna check out 
all the other fasting videos, you could check it out in the cards up here. All of them will be linked below. There's prolonged fasting, there's intermittent fasting guys, there's early time restricted feeding. There's a what I eat in an early time restricted feeding day, plant-based diet. So there's a lot to go through, super interesting topics. You can never prioritize your health enough. Research like this just backs up the theory that making little tweaks does so much from a physiological and molecular standpoint, but what it doesn't highlight is what it does from a psychological standpoint. The mental edge you get from doing things hard and doing them often. You can't beat it, you can't compare anything to it. So, I have one parting tip for you. If your birthday ends up falling on a fasting day, you gotta give your cake to the dog. That's it.